Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple camera obscura out of paper. Here are the supplies that you need. You'll need a thick, dark type of paper like this uh, cardstock paper that I purchased at a office supply store. You can also use any thick paper that you like or cardboard. You're going to need at least one sheet of plain printer paper for creating templates. You're going to need a ruler for measuring. Uh, I'm also going to be using a clear uh, drafting ruler. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need a thumbtack or a sewing needle. You're going to need some tape and you're going to need a small amount of tracing paper or thin white paper. This is the type that you might find at a artist supply store for tracing drawings and it's slightly transparent. So the first thing that I've done is I've cut some paper down to size. I simply uh, cut it into a square which is eight and a half by eight and a half inches. The next thing I'm going to do is to create a template. Um, this makes it really easy to get your folds in the right place, but it's not really necessary. If you want to try this without the templates, that's fine. So the first thing I do is I create a two inch triangle, a triangle that's two inches tall. So I'm measuring out from the corner into the middle of the paper. The easiest way uh, to do that is simply to draw a line from corner to corner so that I can find the middle point. And then I can measure two inches from the end and draw a line that is going to be perpendicular to that center point line. Once you have your template drawn out to two inches, you can cut out that triangle and actually use it for a template uh, for folding your origami camera obscura. From one of the other corners, we're going to make a second template slightly larger than the first one. This one is going to be two and one eighth inches. I'm just going to mark it like I did before. And then you can see how using this clear plastic ruler is nice because I can find this parallel line and draw a perpendicular line very easily. I'm going to mark this with the measurements so that I don't get confused later. So now I have my 2 and 1 8 template and I have my 2 inch template. We're going to make two origami boxes, one slightly larger than the other. Okay, we're going to start with the small uh, box that we're going to make and we're actually going to transform this piece of square paper into a box using origami methods. There's a lot of ways to do these boxes, um, but this is just an easy way that I worked out that is pretty foolproof. So take your template, and I'm starting with the small template that's two inches, and I'm lining it up with the corner of the paper. Then I'm just going to use a pencil and draw a line pretty hard into the paper and also mark that center point. You can see the pencil is nice because it leaves a reflection that you can see when you're trying to do the folding. Make sure that that middle point is visible on both sides of your line. Do the same thing on all four corners, lining up the template with the corner and marking the center point. If you want to, you can skip the template altogether and measure it out on all these sides. 
Okay, so now I have my paper with the template markings on the corners. I'm going to fold it in half like this uh, so that I'm folding it edge to edge, trying to get it as exact as I can. The easiest way to fold it is to bring your finger down hard in the middle and then push to the edges. That's going to give you a nice crisp fold. You can also enhance that fold by pressing your nail into it or you can use your pencil to smooth it out. Then open the paper and do the same thing on the other side, folding it edge to edge, down the middle, and then pushing out to the sides to get that crease nice and smooth. Open up your paper again, and then turn the whole thing over. From here, we're going to fold up these corners, and we're going to fold it right along that pencil template mark that we made before. So find the mark and then fold it right along that line. I'm going to do that on all four corners. So now that we have the corner is folded, you're going to fold one corner down and then take the opposite corner and fold it all the way up until it meets that middle mark that you made. Again, pulling your finger across and pressing down so that you have a nice crisp edge on this opposite side. I'm going to open it up again and do the same thing with each of the four corners. Fold down the corner, then take the opposite corner and draw it up across to the middle and then press down that fold. Then open it up again. I'm going to fold down the corner, bring the opposite corner up, center it up, and then press down that fold. Okay, just one more to go. Fold down that corner, bring the opposite one up, center it up with the mark, and then press down the fold. Okay. So now we have all the main folds in our paper, but we need to make a window to place our viewing screen into the middle of the paper. The way we're going to do that is locate the center square that is folded into your paper, this area here. We're going to cut out a little window that's slightly smaller than that square. The easiest way to do it is to fold the paper back and then just use your scissors to cut a little square out of it. I'm going to tape the tracing paper right over the middle of that window. It doesn't need to be exactly the same size because it's not going to show from the outside. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now it's time to form the box. Fold two corners in and make sure that those folds are nice and smooth. Then take these four sides and pull them upwards and inwards. That's going to start forming the paper into a box shape. I'm going to take this corner and fold it to the inside of the box and I'm going to tape that down. Each time I make these folds I'm also trying to reinforce the fold and make it nice and crisp. Now do the same on the opposite side, pushing the corners in so that the box is forming. And then those two edges will fold together and then fold the corner into the middle of the box. Again, I'm using a piece of tape right on the end of that corner and that will hold the box together. So now I have one of the boxes for my camera obscura ready to go.
Now it's time to do the whole process again using the large template. The large template is two and one eighths inches from the corner to the middle point. Just going to mark it on all four sides again, being sure to mark the center point. Okay, so now we're going to fold up the box just like we did before, lining up edge to edge and making sure that fold is nice and crisp. Open it up and fold the other side edge to edge, lining it up and then pushing that fold out to the edges. Turn the paper over and then fold up from where your template marks are. going all the way around and folding it on all four corners. Then I'm going to open them all up, fold down one corner, and then fold the opposite corner up to meet the center point. Open it up and then do the same thing with each corner. Fold the small corner down and fold the opposite corner up to meet it, creating that long crease. Fold the corner down and the opposite corner up and crease. And then here's the last one. Fold the corner down, fold the opposite one down and crease. So now we have all the same marks that we did on our small box, but we're going to handle the center part a little bit differently. Instead of cutting a window, we're actually going to use a sewing needle or a tack to create a small hole at the end. So go ahead and find the center point and just create a small pinhole in the middle. Hard to see it on the video, but it's there. Now we're ready to assemble our box. So just like we did before, fold two opposite corners in and make sure those folds are nice and well creased. Then we're going to fold in the sides of the box to form the three-dimensional shape. So take those three sides and pull them up towards the center and you can see there's a box starting to form already. Take two that are close together and fold them up right on top of each other and then fold that corner down and tape it into place. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Fold those two sides in and then put a little piece of tape on the corner and then fold that to the inside of the box. Okay, so now I've got two boxes. One is the smaller box that is made with the two inch template and that's the one we made a little window out of and we put some tracing paper on that window. The other one is made with the two and one eighth inch template. It's slightly larger and we made a little pinhole in the front of it. So take your smaller box and push it inside the larger box. You don't want it to be all the way in like this. You want it actually to be sticking out a little bit so that there's an empty chamber in the middle of your camera obscura. So now your camera obscura is complete. Let's see how it works. Okay, so now I've got the camera obscura and I'm just going to look through it through a window. Uh, you can see there's some traffic outside. It may be a little difficult to view because the camera obscura is, um, is kind of dark next to the bright background. So I look deep inside. You're going to see the viewing screen. 
and you can actually see a small projection of the outside world on the inside of the camera. If you have trouble seeing through your camera obscura because it's too dark inside, you can try making the pinhole in the front a little bit bigger with a larger needle or moving the needle around. If you feel like the hole is too large already, the thing to do is actually to cut a larger pilot hole and then tape over the front of it a smaller hole which you can make out of foil or you can use some of your scrap paper and just tape that to the front of your camera. Let's see if this one works better. I'm blocking out all of the rest of the light so that we can get a good view of the projection inside. And now you can see it a lot more clearly. You can use these same techniques to make a camera obscura out of just about any kind of box. All you need to do is seal it up so that the light doesn't come in, and then use your tracing paper to create a viewing screen from the outside. You're going to find that a longer box will give you a larger projected image on the viewing screen, and a smaller, shorter box is going to give you a more wide angle view. So those are my instructions for creating a simple pinhole origami camera obscura. It's pretty easy to do, it's pretty fun to do, and that's how you do it.